a morality of design thinking needs to be challenged. And that's what a lot of nonprofits, whether it's in the university or in the secular world or whatever it is, that they're trying to look for the who are you and uh, the steps that you need in between the uh, in the middle of the design steps of this design class. And so, you know, it'd be really fun is for us as, as a class to design theological methodology that is applicable to say union organizing, doing all of that stuff. I, I thought, wow, so how might it look like to have a theological methodology in the design process? And that's so helpful for a lot of the thing, whether it's ritual design, whether it's pedagogy, it's curriculum, whether it's church, wh whatever it is, having those types of questions, pauses and reflections in between steps and being really intentional and conscious of the language that you use. Um, wow, uh, you, you're going to add $30,000 more to your salary. That's real. That's certainly not the goal, but, but I think that's the project. That is the project, what you just named. Is if we, when we get there, we're, we're, we're getting somewhere. Je Jeffrey, real quickly, and because I hit the record button, can you say what needs to be challenged real quick? Because I think the computer was well, What Professor Goldberg said earlier in term and, and, and Stu sort of commented on it, sort of the amorality of the design process or the perception at least. I, I don't think it's amoral because there's morality that's shaping that, but the perception that design thinking is free of, uh, of a moral cons constitutionality. Right? Yeah. And I just want to maybe just put a finesse on what I said is, I don't want to say that everybody who approaches design thinking has is amoral, or is intending to be amoral. But there is a there is a, a significant and very powerful subset of people in that world that I that I, I refer to as techno working in a, te a technocratic frame. And it's that technocratic frame that is very, you know, very often when people think design, they're thinking engineering and they don't really get why engineering is quite different than design. Engineering is deliberately an amoral technocratic frame. That is, it's about the technology. It's about making little calculations and solving problems that are very linear or relatively linear compared to the human-centered, God-centered challenges that we take on here. I see Phoebe has a hand. Ah. I'll, I'll try to be quick, but I posted, I found an interesting article this week about um, a kind of design thinking that I can't even pronounce that is meant to, it's offered an alternative to human centered, but it, it includes some of the things that we were talking about with the agency and, um, and other more moralistic considerations than uh, just do they like it. But I was so intrigued that in that article, to the point of a moral technocrat, here's someone who really cares, who's like, are we building addictive things? Are we building products that harm the users? Should we care about that? Like, should that be a design consideration? And, um, and clearly making the case that it should be, but then also within that context, within that article saying, I'm not saying that if you're working for a company where the product is going to harm anyone, that you should stage an uprising or form a union or anything like that. And I just was like, wow, that's that's really just a testament to what you were just saying. It's not a lack of morality in the people. It's a structural problem. It's a structural amorality that needs to be confronted. Amen. Yes, that's exactly right. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to, I would love to continue this and we will, I'm sure some of these ideas will percolate. Don't let them go. Keep percolating. Um, but we're going to move on now and we're going to try to do two things at once because I want to make this both efficient and effective. Um, 